Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Forex PNL, where we focus on making big profits and small losses. Today is Friday, the 19th of November 2021. It's 827 p.m. The markets are now closed for the week, and it's time for me to do my weekend analysis for the upcoming week. Uh, right now, I have about uh, 11 currency pairs that are looking quite interesting going into next week. So I'm going to show you share with you guys uh, my analysis for those particular currency pairs, and uh, well. At the end of the day, remember you make the final decision, um, you know, to take a trade, right, based on your own trading methodology, okay? But this is just the forecast. I'm going to try my best to, um, you know, um, analyze these currency pairs. Now, before we actually even go into the charts, I want us to take a look at the um, economical calendar and um, for the upcoming week to see what we have. Now, I have already filtered here in Forex Factory for just high impact news and um, the bank holidays. As you can see here on Monday, we have um, the bank holidays from, from Japan. And um, also on Thursday, we have the um, US bank holidays. Okay, it's Thanksgiving here in the United States. So um, the banks will be closed on Thursday. So that's it for bank holidays uh, on Tuesday, okay, 3.30 a.m. We have the German, you know, manufacturing PMIs coming out um, from the European axis, okay, from Germany. Now, um, this is expected to obviously um, impact the European crosses. So, um, well, something to keep an eye on if you're in any European um, currency pairs uh, at that particular time. Now, also on the same day, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, um, the interest rate decision from the New Zealand axis will be made. And uh, well, in this particular release, you can see that um, there is an anticipation of an increase in the interest rates by um, 25 basis points. You can see from 0 0.50 to 0 0.75. So um, this is obviously one that I anticipate to move the markets regardless of whether there is an increase in the interest rates or not. Um, now, I don't know whether there or this has already been factored into the markets already nobody can tell i mean it's not even my position to make that um to try to guess whether it has already been factored into the markets or not personally i like to stay away all right just to give you um, my own two, two cents all right now um on wednesday we have um the prelim gdp okay from the united states axis also a high impact needs to keep an eye on all right on friday we have um treasure currency reports um that's still tentative so we don't know what time that is going to um, happen and also the fomc release on wednesday now um, that's about it for the um high impact news that we have on the calendar going into next week so um i will advise that you you know pay attention to this um high impact news um and try to manage your trades accordingly um as you are trading next week all right, now it's time for us to now take a look at the, um, you know, the currency pairs, okay, that are pretty much looking interesting as we go into next week. As usual, I'm going to be kicking things off with US dollar Swiss francs, all right, and right now we are looking at the weekly time frame, okay? Now, um, what do we have here, guys? Uh, this pair pretty much performed as anticipated. You can see that um, for this particular week, um, we had a very nice um, bullish move, okay? Price gave us a pullback um, at the open of the week, and then from there, you can see price pretty much ran almost to the peep to 0.9325, which was pretty much the um, level I was targeting for this, this pair to um, you know react from again towards the downside. And you can see we got that pullback, um, Price fell shy of the 0 0.9175 level that I was anticipating, but then from there you can see we got a very nice push to the upside. Okay, uh, I didn't take any trades here, all right, but I also caught some nice trades in um, New Zealand um, US dollar and Australian dollar US dollar, which we are looking better in my own opinion, um, you know, as compared to US dollar Swiss francs. Okay, uh, we're going to get to those ones later. But um, that's pretty much what I'm seeing here. Um, another bullish week. Price gave us a push to the upside. Um, we didn't quite make it to the previous swing high. Um, so who knows? Who knows? Um, maybe next week, another pullback to retest um, you know, demand zones that formed in a smaller time frame. So for maybe another push to the upside. Or will the market start turning around from here? Um, Euro dollar actually gave us a very nice bearish move, which is the reason why I am not so keen on, you know, going long here however um one old rule of trading is for you not to try to catch a falling knife all right so if the market is heading to the upside and it's looking bullish well continue to buy 
regardless of the price okay if it's looking bearish continue to sell regardless of the price okay just follow your trading methodology as you are you know buying and selling any particular currency pay that's it all right regardless of the price level so for now there is no reason in this particular currency pair for me to be taking any short positions as you can see clearly the longer term view for this particular currency pair is to the downside all right um we had this hesitation price hesitated and then finally we had pretty much this triple bottom area uh, right here and price has given us a break of that area and now we are in some form of um, consolidation okay looking pretty much like a triangular consolidation with this being the um the trend line of that consolidation so well um the ultimate price action will be sometime in the future maybe after a break of this high or maybe after a bounce off of this area uh, i will be anticipating that this trend line will give way okay for further continuations to the downside all right but again we have to wait for that to happen before we start searching for short opportunities at this particular instance the bulls are in control and well at this point we just have to consider continue looking for buying opportunities as far as us dollar swiss francs is concerned all right now looking into the daily charts now not much okay um price actually gave us a very nice push to the upside ran into this um selling origin that we have in this area and then you can see from there we've had some form of a pullback and um that pullback actually ended um inside the four hours demand zone all right that we're going to be seeing in a few and um, you can see from there we're beginning to get another bounce to the upside so well uh, the bulls are in this market at least at this particular point in time um personally i was actually keeping an eye on this four hours demand zone but i really don't like the kind of price action that i got in this area that's why i did not consider going long off of this particular zone all right but at this particular point you can see that um price gave us this hesitation another nice push to the upside creating this demand zone in the process and then um finally we got that push to the downside all right into that demand zone right around 0 0.9250 institutional price level and then from there you can see the bulls came into the markets and um well we are now trading way above that particular level now um again like i said this is still looking bullish at this particular moment okay um maybe we get another pullback in this particular currency pair maybe from here when the market opens we get another visit to this um area if that happens then maybe i might be looking for a bounce for further continuations to the upside okay but let's say if the market opens and maybe from here the market just continues to shoot to the upside well it is what it is i'm just going to um you know leave this setup and try to identify demand zones that form on my chart all right okay but for now it's looking bullish however tread with care now that's it for us dollar swiss francs next currency pair is going to be british pounds us dollar okay now for british pounds us dollar this pair did not move as i had anticipated this week um didn't quite break um key levels but um well let's see what we have here now i'm looking into the weekly time frame okay in the weekly time frame you'll notice that this week actually um closed a pin bar um it's looking like we're going to probably have a bearish continuation because if you pay attention this week actually opened gave us a nice push to the upside into that daily supply zone and then from there we got some sellers in this market that succeeded in closing this week a pin bar so well maybe next week uh you might get another move of this nature that might give us another push to the downside who knows maybe to the downside maybe deep towards let's say 130 200 132 50 area and then from there um you know the boost might start coming into this market okay um nobody knows only time can tell okay but um that's what i'm it's looking like at this particular moment it's still showing some bearish buyers yes the week closed bullish however this is a pin bar as you can see the rejection we're getting from the um, daily supply zone all right now um taking a look into the daily charts what do we have um not much um from here it's as if the um price just gave us a retest of 13500 okay um two days ago and um from there you know the market is now beginning to turn around okay who knows maybe from here um uh, another little pullback to fill up our um, supply zones in the smaller time frame and then from there price might now give us another shoot to the downside okay that's pretty much what i am seeing right now in this particular currency pair now if that doesn't happen and um, from here the market just continues to go long in this pair i really do not like um 
long opportunities okay because this is obviously a very large supply zone okay so let's even imagine that the market gives us a nice push to the upside okay breaking free from this uh daily supply supply zone when that happens well we are running into another significant area here we are running into another significant area here and even if we break all of those well we have a, a trend line here that price can easily respect and give us another bounce to the downside so uh i'm not so keen on going long in british pounds us dollar okay the best case scenario for me is that the bs coming to this market next week and we continue to push this thing again to the downside all right um, for now it's as if price is trading inside this um, channel that i have identified this falling channel so it will be interesting to see how the markets behave um, towards the um, return line of this channel okay so maybe the bears coming to the markets okay who knows and then may give us another push to the downside towards the um um, the return line of this channel maybe to test 13200 from there we might see some re reaction to the upside okay that's um, pretty much what i am seeing right now in british pounds us dollar okay uh, not much to say in the uh, four hours time frame okay um if you guys remember last week i wanted price to give me a nice push to the downside uh yes we've been getting hesitations from that particular supply zone however you can see that uh, we are not really going anywhere it's just price dips in gives us a pullback okay dips in again gives us another massive push price is pretty much um ranging in this particular area and that's not what i wanted to see what i would love to see next week is um a decisive move to the downside okay because i'm more interested in going short okay and when price begins to give me that decisive move to the downside then i would um be interested in searching for supply zones that form on the smaller time frames for further continuations to the downside okay at least till we get to the return line of that particular channel now that's it for um british pound some us dollar now next up is going to be euro us dollar okay now looking into euro us dollar um this pair actually this week was very very bearish okay just like the previous week okay but the interesting thing right now is that price is now giving us some um, um, a dip into that particular weekly demand zone area that we had mapped out okay that was formed as a result of this break of structure so right now price is now deep inside that particular demand zone um well it's a level to keep an eye on okay something to keep an eye on because uh, maybe the bulls might come in um to push price again to the upside from here who knows or maybe from here we might again get another push to the downside before the bulls come in to um you know flex their muscle in these markets but for right now the market is still looking bearish like i always say or like i said earlier there is no need trying to catch a falling knife all right um because it's going to hurt you now um in the daily time frame what do we have here now looking into the daily time frame obviously um we have a weekly supply zone in here all right that was formed as a result of this break of structure you can see price breaking this level and this supply zone was formed so well um if at any particular point next week uh, or maybe this might not happen next week but this is a level that i will be keeping an eye on okay should price give me a pullback into this area in the future i'll be keeping an eye around that 116 institutional price level for bounces to the downside for another maybe push into this weekly demand zone all right now let's see how that goes okay so not much in euro us dollar now in the four hours time frame guys um i'm not so keen on taking short opportunities right now from the four hours time frame okay um i actually was keeping an eye on this particular supply zone earlier uh, today but you can see price didn't quite give me an entry opportunity it was just a bounce off and flush to the downside okay so that has already happened and you can see how price is now finding support around that 1.1250 institutional price level so um that's something to keep an eye on all right who knows it, do, will this now work as support or will the market just um you know give us a, a little push to the, the upside for another break for further continuations to the downside who knows only time will tell but um in the event that let's say the bulls begin to come into this market next week okay uh, let's say we get another push to the downside and from here the bulls come into the market um this is a level i'm going to be keeping an eye on okay 1375 area i would love to see price give me a clear break of the 1375 area 
and then any pullbacks towards that 1375 area i'll be looking for an opportunity to go long all right for further continuations to the upside assuming we have demand zones in the smaller time frames um that i'm going to be um you know taking my trades off of okay as you guys know i like to trade off of demand and supply zones okay now um i know that's a little um too much but um that's what i'm seeing right now the only scenario where i'm going to be going long in euro dollar is if we get a nice push to the upside clearly taking off uh these particular levels that we have here right and then flipping to a buy from here upon pullbacks i'll be looking for an opportunity to go long for further continuations to the upside okay towards that daily supply zone that i had mapped out now in the case that that doesn't happen and the bs just continue to push this market again to the downside well i'll be identifying supply zones that form and um, i'll be waiting for price to give me a pullback into those supply zones bounce for further continuations to the downside all right so that's it for euro us dollar okay next up is going to be australian dollar us dollar now this was a very sweet trade I'm not going to waste your time trying to analyze the trade. If you watched last week some analysis, you would see this short opportunity that I took in this particular um, move to the downside. Okay. Now, um, again, price just continues to flush to the downside. We have now broken this level of um, support, level of structure, and um, this supply zone has been formed in the four hours time frame in the process. Okay. So, well, I'm keeping an eye in this particular um, four hours um, supply zone. My game plan is very simple. I would love to see price give me a push into this supply zone. If it holds, okay, any bounces to the downside, I'll be looking for an opportunity to go short for further continuations to the downside, okay? That's pretty much uh, my game plan for this pair going into next week, okay? I continue to, um, you know, try to search for short opportunities from the um, four hours time frame, all right? So that's it, not much. Okay, now next up is going to be New Zealand US dollar. Now for New Zealand US dollar uh, in the daily, like, let me look at the weekly. Now for the weekly, you can see for the past three weeks, we've been getting very nice, um, you know, shorting opportunities. The market has just been very bearish. You can see that price, um, we had this break of structure at this level that created this supply zone in here. And you can see that since then, price has been finding resistance off of that um, supply um, zone that we have in this area okay and that's the reason for this but um in that particular process as well if you zoom into the daily time frame you'll notice that we also have um, a demand zone here on the daily time frame okay that was formed as a result of this break of um, structure so this is a demand zone to keep an eye on okay it will be interesting to see how the market behaves whenever we get into this particular demand zone area okay and you can see that right now price is getting pretty close to that particular demand zone who knows maybe we are going to get a retest of this demand zone next week and then from here we would like to see maybe what happens around that 0 0.6950 um, institutional price level okay maybe when we get to 69.50 area um, the markets we might get a, some bias in this market to con to push price to the upside okay who knows will that be the beginning of the new move to the upside only time will tell but for now um the markets are looking bearish you can see how the market is forming lower highs and lower lows right now okay you can see how it's been forming lower highs and lower lows respecting supply zones that form in the process okay so right now i'm still searching for short opportunities until the market changes okay so um well again a very nice trade this week in new zealand us dollar almost perfect trade um, I took this particular one and then you can see how the markets gave me a very nice push to the downside breaking this level of structure right here and um, you can see in that process this new supply zone was formed um, you can see price gave us a pullback into that supply zone and from there the markets continues to shoot to the downside so right now i'm still searching for short opportunities in this currency pair now um i say that with a pinch of um, salt um, because right now we are pretty close to that daily demand zone and um, well if we get a push to the downside from here, that means we'll be already bouncing off of this particular daily demand zone, all right? And I might not be too interested in taking the next um, 
push to the upside okay i won't be too interested in shorting this pair upon a pullback because you never know the momentum that will be coming off of this particular um, bias that might be in this daily demand zone okay i believe there will be better trading opportunities in other currency pairs so um this is just for you to keep an eye on okay to see how the market behaves in this daily demand zone right around that 0 0.6950 level okay so that's it um let's see how the market goes all right now um next up is going to be us dollar canadian dollar um if you guys remember last week i'm actually still short in this particular currency pair let me start off the weekly time frame this week again was a very um bullish week okay um i went short last week around here from a longer time perspective like i explained in last week's video i am still short in this particular currency pair as long as us dollar canadian dollar is trading below 1.2800 okay i am still short in the longer time frame now um moving into the um, daily charts we have this supply zone in here a little um push to the upside but not much okay price is still closing within it so that's still okay um moving into the four hours time frame however if you guys remember i told you that uh, we might get a push to the downside and another nice swing to the upside okay um, in this particular case, to be completely honest with you, I didn't really expect it to get towards 126.50, but well, here we are. That's how you know nobody controls the markets, okay? This is just a forecast. You still have to follow the markets before making your trading decisions, okay? So um, right now in the 4 hours time frame, I have this um, 4 hours demand zone, all right? Um, and uh, well, should price give me a pullback next week into this particular demand zone, all right? Any bounces to the upside, let's say from, let's say, 125.50 institutional price level, I'll be looking for an opportunity to go long for another push to the upside. Now, the only thing is, in this particular case, I will not be shooting for past 126.50, okay? Um, because if you remember, in the longer time frame, I am still looking at this market as a very bearish market, okay? So right now, I'm just going to be shooting for a couple of pips before hitting the previous swing high. All right. So that's it for my analysis in US dollar, Canadian dollar. Next up is going to be British pound, some Japanese yen. Now, um, this pair is behaving pretty much in a textbook manner. If you guys remember, I told you that last week we have um, a weekly demand zone. Price just gave us a dip into the weekly demand zone. You can see we got some bias in the markets and then um this week again we got the rejection to the downside showing that there are still some sellers in this market you can see we closed a pin bar with the week a very long long week to the upside okay so there's still some sellers in this market maybe from here when the market opens next week maybe we fill up some um supply zones and then from here another push to the downside into this particular demand zone that we have on the daily all right that is nested in the weekly um demand zone uh, right around let's say that's uh, 150 150 area okay maybe 150 150 if price gets here um, I'll be interested in seeing how the market behaves. Any bounces off of this area, I'll be looking for an opportunity to go long for another nice push to the upside, okay? That's what I'm seeing here from the weekly time frame. Now, I'm um, going into the daily time frame, guys. Um, not much. You can see that we got that nice push to the upside and then from there, another nice push to the downside, all right? Um, but if you go into the four hours time frame, okay, the picture becomes clearer. If you remember, guys, last week, in last week's analysis, I had pointed out that we are now building liquidity in this particular area okay uh, and uh, i told you that one of the scenarios that could easily happen is that price might give us a nice push to the upside you know grabbing liquidity above this equal highs area and then from there they will drop this market again to the downside uh, right now we are yet to grab liquidity below these areas okay so what i think is still going to happen is a situation whereby price will give us another push to the downside okay to grab liquidity below this area okay knock off those early buyers and then from here you can see maybe what i'll be interested in seeing is you know the buyers begin to come into this market from higher highs and higher lows for further continuations to the upside that's pretty much what i will be interested in seeing as we go into next week in british pounds um japanese yen okay my key level 
maybe a bounce off of 15200 okay but um i would love to see a dip even towards 150 150 institutional price level okay from right around here i will expect the boost to start coming into these markets okay that's um, pretty much what i'm seeing right now in british pound some japanese yen next up is going to be euro japanese yen okay so for euro yen what do we have here uh well a very nice bearish week okay if we take a look at this particular currency pair on the weekly time frame um well you can see that um price gave us a very nice and um, push to the upside okay a few weeks ago price gave us um, a very nice push to the upside into this weekly selling origin that we have here okay this is a weekly selling origin you can see how price gave us that push towards inside that weekly selling origin topped out at uh, 133.50 institutional price level and then from there you can see we have now taken off again to the downside okay and that low that we have in this area is right around i think 12800 level okay that's where we have the lows but again in my own opinion this move to the downside i believe is going to be a grab of liquidity okay below these lows this equal lows that we have in this area okay i believe that the market is going to give me a nice push next week okay deep below this area to grab liquidity below here and um, dip into this particular demand zone that we have here on the weekly chart okay this is the demand zone that i'm talking about um a dip in here for another push to the upside before the buyers come in okay that's what i'm seeing in euro yen now if we zoom out you begin to see the clearer picture you see that um this demand zone was actually formed um, as a result of this break of structure you can see this area that was working as resistance on our charts finally we got um, a very nice push to the upside creating this demand zone in that process okay so what i'm expecting right now is that um next week um somehow price is going to give us a push to the downside grab liquidity below this equal lows deep into this demand zone from where i will expect the buyers to start coming into this market okay so let's see how that goes okay maybe a retest of let's say 127.25 12700 area any dips into this area if we get any bounces or reversals to the upside i'll be looking for an opportunity to go long for further continuations to the upside okay let's see how that goes now that's it for um euro yen from the um, weekly time frame now if you go into the daily not much the picture becomes clearer you can see that equal lows that i was talking about and um well let's see how that goes okay um in the um, four hours time frame well we have this uh, supply zone in here okay i was also keeping an eye on this supply zone you can see um price gave us a pullback into this particular supply zone earlier today and um, well from here no signals we just got a very quick push to the downside i was not involved in this okay but again a supply zone has been formed here as a result of this break of structure but to be completely honest with you just like in the new zealand us dollar situation that i explained we are pretty close to a weekly demand zone okay so well in this case if we get price to give me a push to the upside okay just after markets open from here into this particular supply zone area if that is what happens then i'll be looking for short opportunities upon bounces for further continuations to the downside that will now take price deep into this weekly demand zone okay but if the market opens and first of all we get a very nice push to the downside deep into this demand zone before the market begins to bounce off of that area then i would not be interested in taking this particular um shorts of any supply zones that we have in this area in the four hours time frame all right just because we are going to be dipping off of those um that particular um demand zone and i believe that there will be enough buyers to pretty much start pushing this market to the upside okay but again only time we tell remember this is just an analysis uh, at the end of the day you make the final decision okay all right next up is going to be swiss francs japanese yen all right so for swiss francs japanese yen i'm not going to waste your time here um just a setup that i have again on the daily charts you can see price came pretty close to that uh, particular demand zone that we have on the um, daily charts so what i'm expecting next week is very simple for price to give me a push into this demand zone um, if from here we get a bounce to the upside maybe from 12200 area if from there we get a bounce to the upside any reversals from here i'll be looking for an opportunity to go long for further continuations to the upside that's pretty much what i'm seeing here in the um, daily chart so i'll be keeping an eye on this as we go into next week okay now um 
Next up is going to be Euro Canadian dollar. Now, this one is a textbook. Actually, I still have a trade open in this Euro Canadian dollar. But if you remember in last week's forecast, guys, I told you guys that, uh, well, um, I would love to see price give me my best case scenario will be for price to give me a nice push to the downside, breaking below these lows that we have here, the low of this range, um, a clear break. And you can see we got that clear break. You can see this massive um candle that we have here okay and then from here i told you guys i would like to see price give me a push to the upside okay to retest breakout levels okay fill up supply zones that we have on the smaller time frame and then from there bounces to the downside i'll be going shorts for further continuations to the downside okay so what do we have here this push to the downside led to the break of this level of um, structure, which in the process, you can see we now have a new supply zone here in the um, daily chart of Euro Canadian dollar. OK, uh, so that's a, a supply zone in the um, daily chart of Euro Canadian dollar. Now, if you move into the four hours time frame, well, price gave us a nice push to the upside. OK, deep into this particular supply zone that we have here in the four hours time frame. This is the supply zone that led to the break of this level of structure. So price gave us a dip into this particular supply zone. All right. The four hour supply zone that is nested in the daily supply zone. And then from there, you can see how the market has pretty much been falling. OK, that was just a retest of 143.50 institutional price level inside this four hour supply zone. And then from here, you can see that the BS are now coming into these markets and then uh, well, Next week, it's very possible to, when the market opens, we might even get a push to the upside, maybe towards um, 14300 area, maybe 142.95 area. And then from there again, the markets might continue going to the downside. OK, but um, well, this is um, a very nice setup, in my opinion. I'm still short. I went short right around, I think, maybe 143.05 area. Well, just following my trading methodology and um, let's see how this goes. OK. Now, that's it for um, Euro Canadian dollar. Um, the next one is actually British pounds, um, Japan, British pounds, Australian dollar. And that's the um, last currency bet that I'm going to be taking an, a look at right now. Now, looking into the daily charts of this particular currency pair, what do we have? It's as if this market is trading in a falling channel. OK, you can see that we have, um, you know, this falling channel. Um, also, we have this uh, supply zone in here on the daily charts. OK, this particular one. Um, that was formed as a result of this break of um, structure. You can see how price gave us a very nice break of this level of structure, creating this supply zone in the process. And from there, you can see how the markets gave us a very nice push to the downside. And now we have now gotten a very nice retracement to retest this particular um, supply zone area right around institutional price level of 1.8600. OK, and um, right around the um, trend line of this falling channel okay you can see how we got a little pierce above that trend line a little pierce again today but we're still closing below that particular trend line so well um it is still looking bearish okay the only time this will start looking bullish is if this market begins to clearly break to the upside breaking this supply zone that we have here okay on the daily chart okay if we get this break then obviously upon pullbacks i'll be looking for demand zones in the smaller time frames for further continuations to the upside okay but if from here the market opens let's say next week and begins to push to the downside okay um, from here, maybe a push to the upside and then a further continuation to the downside. Now, that's where I'll start looking for short opportunities if this is what the market does. OK, um, at any point in time, we have this four hours demand zone that I would love to give way to the downside before I start searching for long for short opportunities. OK, so if we zoom into the four hours time frame, you see that this is the demand zone that I'm talking about. OK, so personally, um, I'm seeing a situation whereby even if you're going to go to the downside, price may give us a dip into this um, four hours demand zone right around that 1.8450 institutional price level area. And then from here, uh, we might start respecting selling origins in the four hours time frame. And um, if we get a break of this four hours demand zone, then that would be the green lights for me to start searching for short opportunities um, in this particular currency pair. So if price begins to pull back, I'll be looking for supply zones that form 
in the smaller time frames for further continuations to the downside okay that's pretty much my game plan for British pounds Australian dollar as we go into next week okay so that's pretty much it guys um these are the currency pairs that are giving me a level to keep an eye on as we go into next week um, as usual guys um if you gained any value from this particular video please do not forget to click on that like button subscribe to the channel and click on that notification bell so that you will always get updates whenever i post a video all right guys that's it from my own end cheers and enjoy the rest of your weekend bye bye